Crazy, huh? We should probably take the valve body off. I would go for a D2. We are in gear, man. It's another day here at Freeman's Garage. We're working on the 62 Rambler again, and we are finishing the clean out of the Borg Warner push button flash o -matic automatic transmission that we started cleaning out in the previous video with the 62 Rambler. As you can see, you can't see the 62 Rambler because it's outside, so let's get it in the Freeman's Garage and get cracking on this. I want to get this done. I want to fire this thing up and push the uh, buttons on the dashboard and see what happens. Is this transmission any good? Are we going to drive this thing for the first time since 1975 or what? It's been less than a week. This came very fast, only a few days. If this is the correct gasket, I will put the seller in the uh, video description. Well, we got a couple of things that's a good sign right here, right off the bat. There is an O-ring taped to the receipt here for our drain plug. That's very kind. And the other thing is that the email address on here is an AOL email address. That's how you know this ain't some teeny bopper. Year 62 to 71. Car Rambler forward slash stud. Short for Studebaker. Good nickname for Studebaker. Stud, all right. Trans type T35 Flash O Matic. Yeah, this is it. Looks like it. We'll find out for sure in a few minutes here when we're. Matching it up to the pan, but yeah, I think that's it. Nice quality material. Heck yeah. Another good sign about this seller is that the time on this receipt says 5.58 a.m. That means they get it before noon. $13.99 for the gasket. Shipping and handling, it shows a penny. Sales tax was $1.52. Shipping charges, they charged me $4.48 from Massachusetts to Texas, and it got here in three days. Invoice total, $18.48. Well, let's jack up the transmission again and get this pan off once again real quick. And I should have put the jack on that side before I brought the car in. Oh well, we'll break on through to the other side. Break on through, break on through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, I do want to get this transmission cleaned up, get the pan back on, get some fluid in, fire the engine up, push the push buttons on the dashboard and see if we can get this thing to go into gear and move. And one thing that's, you know, I was thinking about, you could tell the, tra the transmission fluid in here was red, right? Red transmission fluid, which is good, but it's pretty dark. You know, I mean, it's possible that this thing was leaking and was low on fluid and the clutches got burnt up, which is why the fluid is dark. And you know, all that sludge too, you know, could have clogged things up in here. You know, right now we don't really know, but we're giving it the old college try. I just want you to know that I don't have high hopes of this transmission working properly, but I do have hope and that's all that counts at this point. So let's clean this, then we'll clean the transmission, button it up, put some fluid in it, fire the engine up and push the buttons and see what happens. Sleeves off, gloves on, gotta prepare food for a human being later today. This is quite possibly the worst transmission pan I have ever cleaned out. Thank you. 
It looks like a delicious chocolatey treat, it's, but it smells horrible. I feel like Bob Ross. Just get a little bit of crimson sludge on your spatula and just fill those happy little tree branches in. Well, I think I can take it from here. I'll just go ahead and finish scraping all the old gasket off. And then I'll spray and scrub the pan out. And before you know it, we'll be putting the pan back on the car. Well, first we gotta tackle the challenge of cleaning that sludge out from the transmission, but that shouldn't be too difficult. We'll just wipe, spray, and clean. Oh yeah, that'll do it. Plug's clean. Inside of the pan is clean. This is gonna seal nice and good. Now we're not restoring anything right now, right? So this just, the outside of the pan, aesthetically it just is what it is and we know what the rest of the transmission looks like right now. We're just trying to get the thing on the road for the first time since 75. Oh, it's one year before the, uh, bicentennial all right let's let's see well let's see how cleaning the actual bottom of the transmission is going to go here and we got to get those filters off which yeah i guess you could call them filters we'll, we'll talk about that in a second The million dollar question is, where do you even start cleaning something like this? Well, if, if there's an answer, the answer is anywhere. Just start. So we'll start by scraping some of the old gasket off the mating surface here. Now we could easily spend countless hours cleaning this out. I mean, we, we could Q-tip it if we wanted to, but it's not worth it. We're just going to get it as, as good as we can in a timely manner and then button this thing up. And then if it works, we'll uh, change the fluid again. Not too many miles down the road. You know, we'll give it a second fluid change. And of course, it's almost as po almost impossible to perfectly clean out our mating surface up here at the front but we'll do what we can capturing the bridge over the river rhine wasn't perfect either they just did the best they could and they got through it and everything worked out so so we're starting with just scraping the gunk just everything that we can scrape off, you know, quickly and easily. This big heavy stuff on the surface. And then we will do some wiping and some spraying. And I'm thinking, thinking getting under here with a can of brake parts cleaner will probably do well because it evaporates quickly and I don't, it shouldn't damage anything. What we don't want to do is spray any kind of cleaning agent, chemical degreaser, anything. I don't know what would do what, but we don't want to take chances of spraying something up in here that's not going to 
evaporate because some things won't, uh, you know, won't tangle very well with the transmission fluid and we can get foaming and things like that. In fact, on the previous video with this car, when we took the pan off and discovered uh, what was going on inside of it, someone, might have been you, commented about maybe somebody used an additive in here that didn't mix well, that, <laughs> that didn't mix well, that didn't mix well with the transmission fluid. That's very possible. Now I can't, you know, I really can't see anything because everything's dirty. So I'm just hoping that, you know, I don't jam gunk into a passageway or, you know, or something of that sort that would cause an issue. But with it being the way it is already, I just think we need to just get out what we can and just go from there. You know, not spend 50,000 years doing this. I'm going to finish scraping the passenger side here and then I'll scrape the driver's side as quickly as I can. And then we will start spraying and wiping and see how that goes. So stick with me here. There's the dipstick. Alright, now we're taking off our filters, which there's two of them. There's this one here and then there's this one up here. Um, technically, you might want to refer to these as screens. Which are more like a screen than a filter, but they are a filter. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is these are the filters, but they're not really filters, they're screens. In, in my humble opinion, that is. Okay, those are both the same length. I paid attention taking them out because if one's longer than the other, we gotta put it back in the right spot. Now there's these two bolts here. And I'm hoping this whole assembly, assembly, assembly does not come apart. Seven sixteenths is my guess. And I'm right, oh yeah, cause I'm a pro. Let's pay attention to these lengths. And I'm dropping them into a shop towel. So that way, we don't have to spend forever cleaning them, which is what we'd have to do if we just threw them on the dirty garage floor. Uh, I don't think I said this yet, but I don't want to take the time to take these off, but you never know, this might be packed full of gunk, so... Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, well, I guess, uh... Okay, I got my... <laughs> I only can get one arm under here. So I got my, th my thumb on the screen. And I'm trying to reach the oil pan with my pinky. There it is. Get it back under here. So either that's supposed to do that or these screens are clogged. And they're holding all this fluid in. Well, this is good. Now I'm really glad that we did that because now we got more dirty fluid out. And, oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's completely, completely clogged. No transmission fluid was flowing through this screen. Watch this. Crazy, huh? You know, maybe this is why this car was parked in 1975. It's possible this transmission is garbage. Or it gunked up from somebody putting some dumb additive or something in here. Just as somebody, uh, one of you uh, viewers had suggested in a comment in the previous video. And then maybe it started causing issues and that's why it was parked. I just smeared a bunch of uh, transmission fluid and gunk on the exhaust pipe. That's gonna smell great when we fire this engine up later in this video. Ooh. We got a, a shorty screw over here on this filter. This is a lot of fun. I'm having a blast. I've been learning so, so many new things. Okay, no grip. This one, we got this one here coming out. Yeah, looks like another shorty. Ah! Need some more leverage. It's possible everything being covered in oil was not helping. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Snap it to a Slim Jim. Oh yeah. Did the Macho Man also say, can you dig it? He said that, right? Can you dig it? Okay, another shorty. Yeah, we don't have a bunch of fluid coming out of here. Still nasty though. It's good we're gonna get that clean. About a week has gone by. I had to jump off the car, uh, raising a teenage daughter by myself who happens to be a student athlete you can imagine what that's like but i got transmission fluid we're back i had to leave town for a game as well so point is major commitment of time wouldn't have it any other way though okay let's clean the screens once our screens are clean like mean gene okerland we'll put them back in place and then we will reinstall our pan our new gasket let's not forget to put that plug back in the hole or that would be like a screen door on a submarine looks like this screen has been repaired interesting very very interesting Alrighty, we are clean, as clean as we can be, as clean as we can get. I mean, look at that. that that's, that's like you're looking through a window, a clean one too. The kind of clean windows a bird would fly right into. But we just got one snafu here. We were missing one washer. Because these screens, there's a, they both have a flat side. It's completely smooth. And then on this side, we got these little recessed areas so that we can have, and 
the smooth side goes up into the bottom, onto the bottom of the transmission. Actually, this is the front screen and this is the one towards the rear. It goes flat, sorry, beard itch. It goes flat, okay, and then the bottom side is where our hardware goes and those little recessed areas is for a flat washer and then a lock washer. Now the snafu is we are missing one of the flat washers. And I don't recall. You might need to go back earlier in the video and rewatch the part where we took the screens off, which I might have to do too. Was there one on there to begin with? Did somebody before us lose one and not replace it? I don't know. Uh, I'm sure we can drum up a washer around here, but let's look in here first. I've searched all underneath the car in the kitty litter with this rare earth magnet, but I have not checked in here yet. It would be nice to just put this washer back in. But of course, or, you know, the one that came out of it, if one did come out of it. But if we don't find it in here, I think we're just... I think we're just SOL. If it's in here, we would have got it by now. I can feel the rebar in the floor with this magnet. Uh, yeah, nothing to lose sleep over. I can find a different washer around here. Let's throw the dang screens on and keep moving. <laughs> Had it on backwards, or I was trying to put it on backwards. It's got that, you know, it's Utah. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Transmission, you are welcome. Use brake parts cleaner to, cl uh, to clean those screens out. And then I hit them with compressed air. And that brake parts cleaner that I used is linked in the video description. It's good stuff. I like it. And I don't think it's legal in California. You know, of course, because it's good. <laughs> All right. A while back, a case of that brake parts cleaner was sent into the Freeman's Garage P.O. box. And for the millionth time, thank you to who sent that in. It's really coming in, eh? Gosh, just get, I was gonna say, just getting the screw. All right, one screen down, one to go. Oh, my neck. Ah, I need a lift. A lift to lift the car up and to lift me up. Oh, greasy mess. One day I want to go here. I have a little secret to tell you. I didn't find a washer, but I think we'll be okay. Just don't tell anyone, okay? Or I'd be the laughing stock of the town. Oh, don't put the, don't put the screwdriver through the screen, buddy. Keep it together. Focus. I thought for a second I didn't bring the 7 16th and then, uh, yeah, I remember it was in my other hand. It's just one of those days. I'm having too much fun with this. This is awesome. Flash O Matic transmission. This is too cool. Too cool for school. 
All right. Well, technically it's time to put the pan on, but we gotta talk about that real quick. Okay. So even though during the hiatus, I was able to sneak out here and get the rest of the cleaning done, setting us up for this moment right now to be able to slap this on, but we got cables. We gotta look at some cables. I really wanna test this transmission out. So real quickly, there's four cables. Let's look at them real fast because this is crucial. Well, technically there's five. Ugh. I'll show you the first two that don't mean diddly squat to us. Okay. So that right there is the parking brake. Okay. And then there's the speedometer. Okay, let's go underneath. And of course the exhaust is in our way. Let's back up a little bit. Okay. There's two cables right there. Okay, one is the parking brake cable connected to the parking brake lever we just looked at and goes all the way to the rear brakes. And then the other cable is a speedometer cable that's connected to our, the back of our speedometer and that goes into the transmission. All right, now down to our remaining three cables that actually are gonna come into play for us here and that we actually give a hoot about. And automatic transmissions are magical mystery machines. We're not gonna try to deep dive on this stuff. We're just skate, scooting across the surface to get the car operating for the first time since 1975. This cable here, this connects to the transmission down in there. And we're not too concerned about this at the very second, but we are gonna need to work this out. I did spray some WD-40 right here, trying to get it down into the sheathing because this is currently it does not move and it needs to move because it connects to our throttle linkage at the carburetor. And let's just say for simplicity's sake that it helps maintain proper pressures inside the transmission. And then we've got these two cables right here. One of them connects to the transmission where there is a, it's the cable that has a big rubber uh, dust boot on it. We'll go underneath in a second here and get eyeballs on it, but that's the cable that selects our gears for us. That cable is connected to our push buttons for our gear selection. So if we push a button to go in the gear, that cable will move and it will clunk us into gear. So that cable connected to our gear selection is very important to us. And the last cable is also very important to us. It's the other one of those two. And it connects, Let's see if I can stick you down in here. Well, it connects down there to some linkage. Now that is the cable that puts us in and out of our park position. I'm getting to a point here. Stick with me. Quick peek back underneath here. In the center of your screen is a black rubber dust boot. That right there is where the cable that's connected to our push buttons, our gear selection, that's where it goes into the transmission. That's its dust boot protecting it. And then to the right of it, you see which is now in the center of your screen, that big brown rusty piece of linkage. That, let me move down here like this, so you can get a better look at it. The cable that is connected to that, right there, that's the park cable. A cable that puts us in and out of the park position. And that had a little bit of a rubber boot on there to keep dirt off. And I did break it off, but don't worry. It's not like 
You can see it crumbled just in the pieces of my fingers. It wasn't saveable, and I had to get that off so that we could see see what I was doing. All right, so now that you know where the gear selection cable is, and now you know that the cable hook to that linkage is for the park position, let's go back up in the car, and then, because <laughs> we, we got to get through something. It's going to make sense, though. And for YI, we might need to drop the valve body out of this transmission. I'm hoping not. But we are going to come back down under here and try to manually put ourselves through the different gears. But let's not put the cart before the horse. Let's go open the cart. I'm trying to move quickly because we are so close to firing this up and testing out the transmission, I can taste it. Uh, yeah, it, it gets a little confusing with all the cables and buttons and switcheroos, but get your noggin in here and put your eyes on this. We looked at all the cables. We've seen where they are and what they do. This here is, that's the parking brake. Eliminate that from your head. It's got nothing to do with this. Don't confuse it with this. We'll get to that in a second. Here's our push buttons. And no kids, this is not plastic. That is metal. This is 1962. All right, so here's our buttons. And this is actually a push button start, by the way. Turn the key on and then you use the push button. And this push button is also the neutral switch. So we got neutral slash start. This is reverse. And this is low. This is D1. This is D2. We can talk about exactly what they all do and what their uses are some other time. Not right now. We're just trying to accomplish the mission of testing the transmission out. Got to find out that it works. But obviously this is a, a your reverse gear and then any one of these will put you in forward gear. Now, here's the thing. When you start this car to drive it, slash start it to put it in gear and get these wheels to turn, which is what we're trying to do here. You got to get it out of park and it's in park right now. You push it down for park and then you pull it out to take it out of park. You can't put it into gear if it's in park, but it's stuck. It is seized in the park position. We're get, we're gonna. We're gonna have a lot of fun in future videos playing with these buttons, but for right now, let's just try to get this thing out of park. Cause there ain't no sense in going forward if we can't put it in gear. <laughs> well, there ain't no sense in going forward if we can't put it in gear. Did I just make a profound statement? Ooh. Yeah, it's a good thing we're messing with this a little bit more because during the hiatus when I pulled on it, I just... I pulled on it a little bit, but I just assumed that we were going to be taking it apart. And, you know, the question is, is it stuck on the transmission end of the cable? Or... Is it more towards, or is it under the dash here? And then again, is it just kind of sticky or is it seized? That is the question. We just don't want to break anything, that's all. Oh, yeah! It's not. It's not all the way, but it definitely did move and it didn't sound like anything broke. Let's push back down. See if we can work it back and forth. Work it back and forth. I got my finger where the cable actually comes out of the sheathing. Cause I want to make sure that or that movement was actually, <laughs> actually just the, the cable. Ooh, I think it was. Cause if we're moving the whole thing, then we're not doing any good. 
Yeah, it is. It's just not a lot. Ooh. Ah. Okay, hold, hold on, standby. You know what's tough about it is, you know, it's meant for just a couple digits to get under there, so it's kind of hard to get a grip why am I breathing so hard. I think I need to cut back on the sugar. I'm going to spray some WD-40 under here on the cable, the exposed bit. You know what, you'd actually be able to see it. So why don't you get in here and do that? That way if I start breaking things, you can say something. Yeah, actually let me set up a light for you. Okay, just let me know if things are going sideways. Uh-oh, now it's not moving. But I just sprayed, just sprayed lubrication on it. How's that possible? There we go. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's get some more of this in here. You can see the linkage moved. Then we got the parking lever to move. We're not getting any gear selection action up here. So let's go inside the transmission and see if we can do it manually. There's two rods, you could call them rods, that go into here and they slide in and out. And that's got our gears. And as always, the number one goal here is to not ruin anything. We'll put the screwdriver through the screen, pushing on this piece of wood from the bottom here, trying to get this to move. Let's see if a 25 cent Catholic school rummage sale screwdriver will save the day. Moved. Yes. Thank you, 25 cent Catholic school rubber sales screwdriver. Ow. Okay, I'm gonna go up top. Just keep watching this, okay? Did it do anything? Because I pressed real hard on low and the neutral button popped out, which means it tried to do something. Jeez. Could this piece of wood be any softer? Ow. Ow. Uh, I can't see anything. See, and I don't want to put the pad on and fluid in and test things out. If we're gonna have to take the pan right back off and then we'll have dirty fluid that we don't wanna put back in. I <laughs> mean. At 20 bucks a gallon, we could blow 100 bucks here and not get anything out of it. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, my neck. And my arm. Ah! This is not sustainable. It's two hours later, and I just cannot get this ding dang thing to go in the gear. We can't get it to go in the gear. We don't want to put the pan back on and fill it full of liquid gold. Ugh, my ribs. <laughs> okay. That, that black rubber dust boot, original piece. I ripped that off. That thing was 
shredded anyways on the back side and yeah it wasn't worth anything and I could not see what the heck I was doing but when I got that off I was able to disconnect the cable and the cable works perfectly that cable will move in and out when we push the buttons on the dashboard I'll show you here I'm trying not to get grease all over these buttons so let's say we are in neutral park is off and we want to go into gear okay let's press well if we we're just going to be driving normal i would go for a d2 okay that pops the neutral button out see how that stays in we are in gear man that cable down there it is moving This is exactly what this is supposed to do. So this whole mechanism behind here, that's confirmed, that all works. So that mechanism works. The cable is nice and free, goes in and out perfectly. But what it attaches to, this piece here, okay, you should be able to click in and out, click from gear to gear. And you can't. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I did uh, put a pair of channel locks on some things, but they did pop out and become free, except for it's still not working. And it's possible that the linkage behind this on the inside of the transmission case has come apart. And I have stuck my hands in here like gut in the pumpkin as much as I can and made more sludgy goop come down and make all this a mess again. I could not get my digits on the linkage up in there to find out if it's falling apart or not. Yeah, and that was two hours or so. And I think we should probably take the valve body off because there's not really anything else we can do. Like the license plate says on Doc Brown's DeLorean, I am out of time. But I'm not gonna leave you hanging for a week. As soon as the sun comes up tomorrow morning, I am back on this car. I'm pushing to get this car back on the road, and then we can go 95% focus on that 56 Chevy back there, get that thing on the road, and there's another Rambler outside waiting to come in for some love and affection. And up on the screen right now is the full playlist. All the videos with this 62 Rambler. I'm sure there's one in there you'd like to watch next. And I gotta get some sleep. Big day tomorrow.